episode three of the growth creator model. This one is about to be a little bit more tactical as I walk you guys through the 500K a month client acquisition infrastructure and funnel that we use for ourselves and for every partner that we work with who's selling infrastructures. Uh, the same funnel is being used with companies doing a million dollars, two million, four million dollars a month. So it's really exciting for me to get to give you guys the breakdown. Um, at the end, you guys are gonna be able to access the process, the protocol, of that we follow to assemble this infrastructure. And most importantly, the launch checklist from the funnel, the belief shifting VSL to the ad structure, everything. Okay. And how we also do appointment setting when we get lead flow and uh, all the way to collecting cash. Um, we've used this funnel to help companies who are starting from scratch. Uh, we've helped the client go from zero to 20 K collected in, um, like less than 11 days on his first build and release offer. Uh, we've also used it to help clients get 53x return on every dollar spent on ads, okay? So I'm excited for you guys to check this out. At the end, you gotta stay till the end. You'll get to access the launch checklist that we uh, actually follow to assemble this whole infrastructure. And uh, again, if you wanna get access to the 178 page doc, get access to the checklist, get access to the Lucy chart, the, all the flywheels that we're uh, presenting in this um, these episodes, join the Natural Born Leader community. And every Sunday, I do a call uh, with you guys where I can answer every question that you have. And by the way, if it looks like I'm in heaven, it's because I am in heaven. And um, if you finish this challenge every episode, then you can get to join me in heaven one day. <laughs> Ciao. Enjoy, guys. So um, today's topic funny enough, which is the thing that everyone is excited about always like, okay, how do I get leads? How do I get appointments? How do I, how do I scale? How do I get more clients? Everything like that. Most of the time, this is not actually the thing that would, that will necessarily get you to scale to let's say a hundred grand, 500 grand, a million dollars a month. If your business model and your offer and your, your content, everything before the actual acquisition is not dialed in, you will have a hard time scaling. And that's where you guys will see people who are like, oh, yeah, I can get $3 leads. Okay, but why aren't you making a million dollars a day if a lead actually costs you three bucks, right? Or you will find people who are like, hey, I, I can do cold email. Okay, cool. Well, why aren't you making billions of dollars, right? So that's why over the last, over the last two days, I spent my time focusing on, hey, make sure your offer is expensive enough. Make sure your content is dialed in. Because without those two things, without you working on those two things, even if I gave you the client acquisition infrastructure that's making someone like Cole Gordon $4 million a month or the seventh level guys uh, $4 million a month, you're not going to get there because it's not, it's client acquisition is just a way to get attention and to get people to, 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 to take action. But the thing that happens beforehand is more important than the actual client acquisition, the lead gen and sales process. Okay. So that's why if you guys missed the first two days, like you, you, there's no point in watching this video, like this useless. Okay. So make sure you go back, watch the first two, four hour, hours of training, and then get back on this and then let's roll. Okay. So let's get into it. A hundred to 500 K a month client acquisition infrastructure. The reason why I'm talking about hundred K a month and 500 K a month is because, um, the same thing can get you to 10K a month. The same thing can get you to 50K a month, right? So um, so I'd rather not talk about the mechanisms that get you to 10K a month. And I'd rather talk about the things that get you to 100K a month because that makes it inevitable for you not to make 10K per month. So for everyone who's not necessarily, whose goal is not to make half a million a month, well, it doesn't matter. This is going to get you your 50K a month, okay? So today's topics, we're going to talk about the biggest constraint, obstacle keeping you broke. In my opinion, 100K profit or less, you're broke. Uh, the old unleveraged way of acquiring clients versus the new leveraged way of uh, the new leverage acquisition method, where you get eight times more results from eight times uh, from less, like eight times less inputs, right? So from working eight times less, in 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 other words, right? By becoming a becoming a capital allocator, uh, from two dollar in the bank to twenty. Uh, I just heard that I just learned that it's actually twenty four K. Uh, or 25k in cash in 14 days um, by Felix. So I'm going to invite Felix and Jolie to come on and actually share their experience uh, because their case study is super, super uh, insightful 
And I can't wait for you guys to hear their story because it's going to be really sick. Um, 100K a month in revenue funnel breakdown. So I'm actually going to break down the actual funnel as well as the process of you guys going about assembling everything. All right. Now, uh, first things first, obscurity is the enemy of most businesses. Uh, I loved how Grant Cardone goes about this because he keeps it really raw. He says that the best product never beats the best known product, right? And if you guys were to check out Grant Cardone's uh, Instagram, you guys would see uh, probably like a, a hundred stories and a bunch of content every day on his profile, right? And the guy is like 62, 63 years old. Why would he be doing that? Because he understands the importance of attention, okay? Uh, no matter how great your build and release offer is, you'll get beat by someone with more attention. And, uh, you know, before I used to get really mad with people making more money than me, but offering a shittier service. And I realized that like, well, what's the point of you being mad, right? Like you can either, you can either be mad and stay broke, or you could just learn to get more attention and just play the game, that business, um, the, the, the game of business, right? And I think that that's why uh, when Hermosi so Kylie Jenner become a billionaire, right? I don't know if you guys remember, but <laughs> he saw it like a 21 year old becoming a bi billionaire, right? And it pissed me him. It pissed him off because of course it's gonna piss you off, right? Why wouldn't you get pissed off when you've been hustling, sleeping on the gym floor, learning about sales, learning about the closing framework, learning about leads, learning about everything about fulfillment, and then you have this. A uh, pretty girl um, with a hundred million followers making a becoming a billionaire. You'd be like, guys, what's going on, right? Which is why yesterday I covered, you know, that you know some of the best entrepreneurs and superstars, they became idols and billionaires due to the level of attention they generate, not because of the quality of their products or services. Okay, like the Hormozy today is going to make infinitely more money. Not because he's he got better with Legion or or sales process or how to fulfill for clients, but because now he has ridiculous amounts of attention. Okay, the difference between someone making twenty k a month and two hundred k a month or two million dollars a month isn't necessarily how great their product is. Instead, is how much attention are they generating uh, their, to their products and services? You want to make a million uh, a million dollars and five hundred k profit every ninety days? It's simple. Just figure out how much attention is required. And spend everything you can. And when I say spend, I mean money, energy, time to achieve it. And uh, for those who've seen some of my old training, I used to say that, hey, volume negates luck. If enough people hear of you and know of you, getting rich is inevitable. Right? I'm sure everyone here sometimes they wake up and they're like, okay, so the, here's the biggest feeling. And this is where I really hate uh, when... Um, so I've started getting every client, uh, you know, I've started getting our team to get every client to report their stats every single day, every single week, right? Because I ended up realizing that we would have clients who, who would be like, hey, I haven't closed a deal uh, in the, I only closed, let's say one deal this month, right? And I'd be like, oh, interesting. Wow. What a bad thing. Right. And, you know, you would come to a client would come to me and they'd be like, they'd be super emotional. They'd be like, oh, my God, I haven't I only made this one, one, one close deal. I'd be like, what's going on? I'd be like, OK, let's go look at the numbers. Oh, you booked nine calls. You close one deal. So that's like a little bit over 10 percent closing rate. And I'd be like, OK, how much outreach did you do every day? How many leads did you get every day? They'd be like, oh, I don't know. Well, I'd be like, well, you the inputs you put in this month gave you nine calls and one client. So why are you emotional? You did the work and you got rewarded for the work or your team did the work. But so we have a tendency as entrepreneurs when we're not tracking our numbers to to when we're failing, when you're not making enough money this month, when you're when you're making enough but not really what you want to do to go and become emotional by your success. But it's like no, why the fuck are you being emotional? The world doesn't care. It's like gravity. You, if I jump out of this 29th floor, I'm going to die. It's inevitable, right? So what you figure out, instead of being emotional about, oh, my God, I'm not scaling my business, go back to the data and analyze what got you nine calls and what got you one calls, closed deals. And then literally 10x if you want 10 deals, right? So 
literally every everything we do is about tracking data because we don't want to be emotional okay no emotions out here like if you're failing it's cool you deserve failure if you're making a bunch of money you deserve it because you put in the work so if you want to generate i would say 10k a month you can get away with one or two k you know um, people hearing of you every month to generate 50k a month you probably can get away with 300 to 500 people every day so that means that Look at how the volume changes. So you go from, uh, on average, one to 2K uh, impressions or reach per month to if you want to 5X your revenue, it actually, 5X revenue requires you to do what? Uh, let's do the math. Let's let's take 400 outreach per day times 30. It literally it literally requires you to go from, um, from one, let's say 15, 1.5K reach Per month to 12k reach per month to 5x your revenue requires you to 10x your volume of outreach or your volume of reach your volume of attention this is where most people uh, go wrong they think that oh in order for me i've made my first 10k month without doing outreach right who has had this feeling where it's like oh i just hit my first 10k a month and I never did outreach. I don't fucking do outreach. Why would I spend money on ads? Why would I do that? So I think I'm going to get to 50K a month in six months by doing the same thing. That's got to be the dumbest thing you could ever think. It does not work like that. The bigger you want to scale, the more, the harder you need to work to even experience incremental gains. Okay? And this is where, uh, this is where like, it becomes hard for people to understand the, co the cost of scaling. The cost of scaling is, is exponential in efforts. And this is why Hermosi always says that uh, he has this thing around, like, just do volume. Just do a lot of it. If you think something is working, do a lot of it, because that's what it's going to be take for you to scale. Okay. So to generate, you know, just go 300 to 500 people every day to generate hundred K in my opinion, you need a thousand people every day. And, but when I say a thousand reach, I don't necessarily mean pure album prospecting or pure reach from ads. I generally mean like even if you're uh, you have content online, and that gets you thirty percent of this reach, and the rest is from outbound or from paid ads, then you're hitting the goal. But you need thirty thousand impressions every month or reach. Uh, when we generated five hundred k a month, I think I had reached one hundred seventy thousand people in ninety days on YouTube, and another one hundred thousand um in um on fa Facebook or Instagram. So that means that. To make half a million a month, you need to probably get a quarter of a million people to know about you, right? So now let's go over the old uh, and the, the new leverage way of, um, of of acquisition. Over the last two years, we've primarily relied on outbound prospecting to scale client acquisition at IO, as well as our clients' businesses. We've done pretty all right, you know, better than most. When building outbound infrastructures, uh, the reason why we got a little bit better success for for our clients than most people is because we would add the condition that a minimum of two trained setters had to be onboarded and uh, and we needed to hit 300 hours per day uh, that it was a requirement, right? And, um, you know, that worked really well because I think that when you just get one VA to do like 100 hours a day, which most people don't even get to that volume, um, you're still going to have a hard time scaling uh, fast enough so we would just say, hey, we're going to train setters. We're going to get you two of them onboarded in the first 10 days of you being part of the program. Okay. And uh, but now we've actually built uh, a platform uh, to hire trained talent on demand for growth for members of GCP and uh, as well as the natural born leader community. Uh, and um, you guys can see it here. Like you literally have hundreds and hundreds of trained setters. You can see where they're trained. Some of them are trained on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. You can look at their uh, video to see them introduce themselves. You have others who are Instagram, Facebook. You can see if they're part-time. You can see if they're full-time. So this is a SaaS that we're working on uh, for essentially acquiring talent. Um, just a quick little um, plug-in. Um, the how fast you scale your organization is is more about talent acquisition than it is client acquisition okay um one of the biggest i remember i put made a video about this but when hormozy and layla were running gym launch they were stuck i think like six figures a month 
And um, they talk with this person. I don't know if it was a business consultant or a coach or whoever they was, but uh, they were like, okay, but why are you guys stuck? And then the thing that the the person told them was, um, what does your talent acquisition, what does your talent acquisition funnel look like? And they were like, well, we don't, we don't have any. Okay. And they went on to build a new acquisition, like for talent, pure talent. Like they would onboard setters, they would onboard other leaders, every every like every role in their company. And they went from I think they went from like 100k a month to four. No, they were at 400k a month. They went from 400k a month to four million dollars a month in like six months. Nothing changed around how they acquire clients or around how they serve their clients. The only thing they changed is how many employees they onboarded. So if you don't have talent in your company, the reason why we would force our clients to onboard talent is because we understand that a company is about people. Your funnel, someone needs to look at it. Your setters, someone needs to look at them. Someone needs to be constantly working on optimization, right? So if you if you only have two, three people in your company, I promise you, it's totally fine. It's totally normal that you're not scaling because no one actually cares about your success. Why would you scale? Nobody's actually waking up and making sure that things are dialed in. So a lesson I can give you guys acquire talent, okay? And uh, over the next few months, you guys are going to see us working a lot more on this talent acquisition thing, but um, that's not the point of today. So six months ago, we stopped relying on setters to generate top of funnel attention or automations. What I mean by this is we just stopped getting like a VAs or, or specialists to work on top of funnel attention, generating efforts. Why? Because of leverage. Okay. And I want to kind of like introduce to you guys a quick, uh, important thing. And I have a lot of people who still do outbound, who still do um, a lot of like um, more traditional acquisition methods, like outbound cold email. And I even had uh, Benjamin who asked me a question yesterday, like, hey, why did you guys go from, um, why did you guys stop focusing on, on uh, like setters or why did we stop pushing cold email? Well, I'm about to show you guys why. So, um, this is something that everyone needs to understand. There's something called asymmetrical relationships, right? So when you're starting your business, so when I made my first 10K a month, I think I had maybe one, one VA helping me out, but I was also doing a lot of my appointment setting myself, okay? So that means that the effort that I was putting in was kind of like limited uh, and um, the amount of revenue I could generate was also limited, right? So that means that I was the you know, the only person pushing down and I had maybe one VA. And uh, so that means that in order for me to to lift a ton or to lift a million dollars, I would have had to put in a million dollars worth of effort, right? Meaning if I want to lift a ton, I'm probably going to re be required to have a ton in effort and forced pushing this thing, okay? Now, this is what you call one input, you get one output. This is what kills most people. No matter how great you are at the thing you do, like <laughs> a lot of people who do cold email or who do appointment setting, uh, they're like, yeah, I can get you a lot of calls. But I'm like, well, for me, I don't really care about getting calls. I can get calls. For me, what I want is I want to put in the least amount of efforts and get the most amount of outputs from my efforts. So when you're just focusing on scaling things like cold email, even if cold email is actually somewhat leveraged because you find the list, you put it, plug it in, you put some automated email, some subject lines and everything like that. And you get a specific, a little bit of leverage. You get minimal leverage, right? Because even for your cold email to get you 10 X the results, you actually need to do 10 X the optimization. You need to do 10 X the volume, right? Or when you high, when you onboard like one or two new setters, what ends up happening is even though you're adding more leverage to your acquisition, it's still one input, one output. Because every setter you add on, it's just 100 more of outreach per day. So it's still one in, one out. One output, one input, one output, right? So this is like a symmetrical relationship. You add more effort, you get the same amount back at the added. But... What I ended up realizing is that with ads, it's infinitely more leveraged. 
And the reason why is because of the following. You still have the same amount of effort. You still have the same amount of hours in a day. You still have the same amount of whatever, right? But if you spend $20 on Facebook ad, you get a thousand impressions for 20, let's say for 20 bucks. Some impressions, some CPMs are a lot higher, right? So cost per mil, so cost per thousand people to to your to cost per thousand impressions. Now, what ends up happening is since this doesn't require necessarily for you to spend 20 hours to, or as an example, if I wanted to get uh, the same outreach done, the same impressions per day, I would probably need 10 VAs, right? But in order for my VAs to get me this outcome, they would need to do what? To spend probably each uh, like five hours. So I would have to spend 50 hours of work to get the same inputs that technology and AI would get me. And this is something I want you guys to understand. Just because you're not the one doing the work does not mean that the cost of time is not, it's not that you're not incurring the cost of time. Does that make sense? Just because your VAs or your setters are doing the work and spending their time and you think that you're leveraged, you're not that leveraged. Because also for you to experience the results, this time needs to be spent. Whichever way you put it. So technically, outbound is still time spent, right? So I realized that like, oh, we need to stop doing this dumb, dumb work. Well, it's not dumb work, but it's like we need to be more, we need to be smarter. Where let's say instead of me having to work extremely hard or to get my team to work 50 hours to get me the value I need, what if we were able to leverage a technology that could get us to lift a ton with just putting a few kilograms worth of uh, worth of effort and force, right? And that's where you get here, okay? You do not make half a million dollars in 30 days, okay? Half a million dollars in 30 days is averaging um, 30, is actually averaging $16,000 a day, okay? And you do not pull this off unless you get leverage, okay? So that's just a lesson around outbound. I hope it's pretty clear. Does it does it help? A little bit of lesson on on outbound. And by the way, this is coming from someone who who spent two years and made five million dollars and generated more millions for my clients from outbound. It does not make it does not mean that it does not work. It just means that uh, you will not do a billion dollars a quarter by just doing outbound by becoming an expert at outbound. Okay, so. Um, so it's super important for us to be smart and to stop necessarily just playing the game um, how um, just because we're doing better than what we were doing before does not mean that's our potential. We need to seek to achieve our potential. So old beliefs, ads are expensive and outbound is less expensive slash more sustainable. Is this belief true? And was it serving me? Not really. Because I think that if we would have jumped on ads sooner if for ourselves and for our clients, I think I'll probably be doing eight figures a year, okay? So um, now, outbound is definitely more sustainable over time as the cost don't, doesn't rise as fast as the cost of running ads. But in no way is it less expensive. Just from what I just explained um, is that, let's just go over a new, a different way of explaining it, right? So what do we really value? Why are we in this game in the first place? For most of us, we want to free, be free to enjoy the amazing gifts of life that life has to offer. Some of us need to drive Porsches. By some of us, I mean me, okay? <laughs> we need some penthouses. We need to take care of our family. We need to be there for our loved ones. We need to probably make love on a private plane just because, just because a little baby said it. He said he spent 70K to have SEX on a jet. So I'm like, what? Come on. What is he flexing on me? So I was like, come on. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, I'm joking. But and most importantly, to be present as soon as possible right? So technically, the only expensive thing is the thing keeping us from experiencing the above sooner, right? So money is not an expense, like nothing. The only expense is you not living your dream life today. That's the only thing you should be worried about today. You should not be worried about, oh my God, Lem List is going to cost me 15 bucks a month. Oh, Loom is going to cost me 10 bucks a month. Who cares? It's not about the cost. It's about the outcome, right? Money is not the goal. 
Therefore, wasting it shouldn't affect you whatsoever. Using money isn't an expense, it's leverage. It means becoming a capital allocator, trading money instead of trading your time. And for me, I want to kind of like give you guys a quick education about money. Money is a store of value. Money in and of itself doesn't mean shit. Okay. If we'd have if we had if we had no needs and wants, money would not exist. Okay. The definition of value is the things you need and want. Why would you need and want things? Because it increases your ability to survive and it increases your probability to reproduce. Survival of your genes. If you guys have not yet read about evolutionary psychology, I highly suggest you guys read evolutionary psychology. The definition is everything we do. Everyone, the reason why everyone is on this call, whether you know it or don't want it, don't know, is because you want to survive and you want to be able to reproduce. Now, the reason why you want to reproduce is not actually a conscious decision. Like no one actually just wakes up and be like, oh, I want to make babies. No, the thing is we have this, uh, it's not a bias. It's like, um, like we're literally engineered from thousands and thousands and millions of years to uh, our genes within us. Our system is literally just selfish as fuck. Meaning your genes don't actually care about your conscious. It just cares that they keep replicating themselves over and over and over and over again that's why we have the urge to reproduce the reason why you want to have sex is not because who here who here wants to have sex let's have this lesson have you ever made the conscious decision like oh i want to have sex on tuesday i want to have the desire to have sex no you just have that fucking urge but why because your genes have a mission and it's we need to be alive when you die. I don't care how you're going to do it. I don't care who you do it with. Let's be there when you're gone. <laughs> you know, so like our body is just like a vehicle to, to create, to, to, to just transfer genes, right? So everything we do, we create these little business games like, oh, I need to make 10K a month. Really? You need to make 10K a month to survive? Since when? Since when? Oh, you need 10K a month to drive a Mercedes? Since when? There is the public transport. Go take a bus. Oh, you have legs too. You don't need a car. Why do you want to drive this 500 horsepower car? Because when you go on a date and you start drifting, then she may want to, she may want to be the mother of your kids. I'm joking. But no, like every, every all these games we play are all to just either help us survive because we acquire resources. The reason why we want to make half a million a month is because we want resources. Resources allow us to do what? To be able to survive. Because if you make half a million a month, you probably can withstand any type of bullshit that comes your way. So you can pretty effortlessly survive. The second thing is because you have a lot of resources, evolutionary, evolutionary psychology talking, back then when you were living um, like a thousand, two thousand years ago, and um, the, the women had to choose who they're going to mate with, they're not going to choose with the guy who can't hunt. They're not going to choose you because what are you going to offer to their to their kids? You're going to give them what? Nothing. You're going to let them die. So women evolved to literally only pick the best mate for the survival of what? Of their genes. So the reason why we want resources is survival and reproduction. OK, so don't get it twisted. You do not. You're not. A, you're not. The goal is this business whole thing. The reason why I'm doing this web is because it's just generally because of these two reasons. OK, so never get confused with that. Don't get don't get too attached with business, because once you understand evolution or evolution, you realize that like, oh, I'm actually just playing games that I don't even know why I'm playing these games. So we all get caught up on like, oh, I need views. I need attention. No, no, no. no. You just want to survive and reproduce. Like, psh, don't don't make it that complex. OK. So it's good to understand this because then it allows you to play the game without being so involved and so attached to the to the outcome. OK, now the issue with being employed or selling time, a.k.a. monthly retainers, for those who sell monthly retainers, um, you still kind of like are selling your time in case you haven't noticed, because even uh, because your mindset becomes, oh, for one month, if I charge three K a month, then one my month work worth. My my month is worth 3K a month type of thing. It's just that you don't necessarily work a bunch of hours, but you're still associating that value to a specific timeline. Okay. Now, when you're doing when you're doing this, you start associating money with time. 
Therefore, you start valuing it as much as we do time, which is the worst mistake ever, ever, okay? Especially as you transition into the world of business. The largest organizations are never are never or rarely built on cash flow. Like this whole thing of like people who brag about, oh, I never got debt. <laughs> I'm like, are you like, it's the dumbest thing to brag about because you're essentially saying, oh, I'm actually a dummy. I'm going to spend my time to go sell and then take the money and then use that money to experience a little bit of growth and then go to get more, sell more of my time to do some, to do a lot, some more selling of my time. Right. But the people who are actually insanely smart, they never do that. Right. Because no one has time to spend building and accessing value that is required to build a company when the value already exists in the world. And the value in this case becomes talent and it also becomes technology, right? So any smart founder, the people who are not learning how to create businesses from courses, they go to investors, they go to venture capitalists, and they go to private equity firms and raise millions, sometimes billions, aka open AI, right? Open AI, I think they're almost valued at over, I think they're almost valued at like, I, I recently heard like a 60 billion valuation. Who here thinks they could build a 60 billion dollar valuable company from doing outreach and getting a closed deals and then taking that 2K a month, that 1500 profit or that 5K profit or that 100K profit a month and then building a 60 billion dollar company in the next decade? You're not going to do it. Just pointless. So you have two choices. You can either play the game of, oh, I'm going to be... I'm going to be like someone who's just dumb and just keep playing this slow, this one, one input, one foot forward, one type of bullshit games. Or you can actually start thinking like people who are actually building insane. The people are actually changing the world, right? You want to talk about the matrix? These people are the matrix. They control it. They literally create the worlds we live in, okay? Because they don't, they don't play by the rules of, oh, I want to save money. I want 80% margins. Fuck that. The fuck is margins for, right? So understanding that billion dollar companies are built from leveraging debt, which is financial leverage, why would you spend all your time trying to build wealth, right? What does Alban rely on, heavily rely on? Time. You need to manage your team. You need to do lead sourcing. You need to do lease building. You need to follow up. You need to do tracking. You need to avoid restrictions, right? With Alban, you're trading more time than money, which means that your main priority for most people who do this is because they're trying to save money to experience a desired outcome. But what's more valuable, money or time? Time is more valuable because if you were to allocate the same time to a more leveraged vehicle, a more leveraged offer, like a build and release offer that we talked about on Monday, a more leveraged acquisition method, you can actually go from being stuck at 30K per month to $3 million a month with the same 24 hours in your day. Nothing changes. Nothing changes, okay? Once I questioned the belief around outbound, I realized that the belief I have in outbound is the same exact belief keeping me from the next level in my career, which was exponential growth, right? So today we're launching paid ads campaigns for member of the growth creator program, and we've never seen uh, this many wins the, uh, this fast ever, right? And I want to show you guys real quick some of the some of the results we've been seeing. It's fucking insane uh just from these nine clients that we've um kind of like assembled for me to kind of like show you guys some of the the results of this of focusing on leverage uh we've generated 2009 2000 leads in the last like 60 days or so and 666 sales calls 60 days guys okay and just to show you guys um more data uh, i'm going to show you guys kind of like this so felix um offer you know they have an offer growth offer in the solar industry they got 495 leads 249 sales calls um went from you know two dollars 25k in cash collected um in the last 14 days booked twice as many calls in the last 24 hours than in the last two months this is what you guys need this is what it means leverage okay it's not about how hard you're working felix and jolie did not work harder in 24 hours than they did in two months they probably worked insanely harder and worked at least, they probably didn't even work these 24 hours. They just let the ads do their thing, okay? And this is what is called leverage. Uh, and, you know, we're going to go more into this, right? But um, I just want to show you guys. 
Uh, Andel, 716 leads, 239 sales calls. Went from booking zero meetings to having no success in his solar agency to closing three deals. Uh, and um, if you guys look at here, he woke up at 9 a.m., three leads, two meetings booked. Okay. And I believe uh, these were being booked when we were in Spain. <laughs> so that was sick. I think he messed up a lot of the calls because he was away, but he was away having a lot of fun. But um, Jude, uh, 93 leads, 38 sales calls, 17 year old, um, you know, without a clear direction, how to start and scale his agency went from booking a few calls a month to booking three, four, five calls a day. Um, Liel, um, they went from, um, I think they were kind of like pushing a growth offer in the online space to going after moving companies, 271 leads, 65 calls booked, uh, in the, what was the timeline here? I think it was probably what, like like two weeks, two weeks, something short, like two, three weeks. Yeah. And here's the thing. The difficult thing is we're trying to maneuver having six, five calls a day while both of us work full remote jobs. Um, and um, yeah, they had, were asking like if they could book in following the following month, right? Which is crazy. For COD, 64 leads, 13 sales calls. Uh, what was the timeline here? I think. This is the same thing. This is like two weeks right yeah. when he launched his. Yeah, uh, cool. Baz, uh, this is, um, he has a coaching program, but when he joined the Growth Career Program, we helped uh, him build a new offer, which is focused on uh, helping closers transition into sales agencies because that was a higher ticket offer. Um, and uh, we kind of like got him from B2C to more B2B slash, even though like closers are not necessarily business owners. Right. But we're helping them become business owners. Um, and then um, he launched ads and, um, you know, booked calls, six more leads. And uh, I think he booked what, like he's booked eight calls so far. Um, and um, then 64 leads in the SaaS space, uh, meetings, four calls booked, uh, 12K deals signed. Um, in July, we had 16 book calls. A bunch were uh, qualified and did 21K in revenue. Um, skip the 10k month mark altogether. Now it's on to scaling. Uh, Martin, um, 50 leads, 21 calls booked. Um, invested in tons of court in tons of courses before with no real value is and were hesitant on joining as they had been burned so badly in the past with agencies who would never onboard them post purchasing. <laughs> when they joined, we helped them offer new acquisition, VAs, outbound, and ads. Um, in just three days, they were able to book 14 calls. Um, meetings now one week later they have been able to close two of the deals at 7.59k each okay so um we could go on and 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 on okay but um and as you guys can see like we're in a bunch of different niches we don't just necessarily focus on one niche but this type of growth like you'll not get these many leads and calls from outbound no matter how you put it you can flip it on its head you can do split you can try to do like walking lunges you can do whatever you want to do okay like you're going to need technology to access this amount of leverage okay so uh so that's why you know just get on ads you know you can even stop this and just go run some ads right now but um now let's focusing um we started focusing on inbound and educational assets right when designing our ad funnels, we were primarily looking to solve the following. Affordable and consistent lead flow. That's one. The next thing was high show up rate. That's two. The third thing was short sale cycle and collect cash faster. Why? Because there's no point if you're getting leads, if you're getting a bunch of appointments, if people are not closing. Okay? That's why it's super important um, for you guys. You guys will realize that one of the things we do for our clients is um, we don't expect you to necessarily be the person who's going to scale your company. What we want to focus on is, can we get you the lead flow? Can we get you the show up rate? Can we build the systems? Can we build the appointment setting teams for you? And then can we also just simply put in a closer who's more experienced than you? Because what you don't want to do is want to be so skilled, so selfish, that you end up costing yourself the success you need. So as an example, today... Um, you know, let's say my team onboarded clients in the last three days while I was doing this, this, uh, this training, right? But I could have also been the type of guy who's like, no, I'm the best closer in my company. So I need to take every sales call. So now by me being stuck on taking sales calls, 
I would have not been able to deliver value to 300 people every single day, right? And I would have probably not been at the best closer. Why? Because I'm I'm emotionally invested in my offer. So anyone who tries to argue about my offer, I'm just going to tell them, hey, go fuck off. Go, go, go buy from someone else, right? So rule number one, don't try to be the smart. Don't try to be the smartest person on your team. Like nobody does that. That's crazy, right? So many make the mistake of launching ads wanting to book calls and they end up with the following. Super expensive calls with prospects who don't buy, okay? And super cheap calls with prospects who don't show up. <laughs> who here has experienced the, both of these two? Where you're, let's say your funnel is just prior, prioritizing lead and then straight to a call funnel. And then yes, you're booking calls and they're pretty cheap, but nobody buys. Or, or, or the calls are super expensive because you're sending them to a VSL funnel. And then let's say you're spending 300 bucks, 500 bucks per call. And you just spend all that money, but no one actually ends up buying. Or you get the reverse, which is cheap cost per lead, cheap cost per call. And then nobody's showing up because they don't even remember booking the call. Right? So we want to avoid that. Right? It's not good. It's not, it's not, it's not super, super smart. So what you want to do instead, uh, you want to kind of like leverage this value funnel. Okay. Ouch. Um, and what does the value funnel look like? Um, as you guys can see here, it's an ad, an opt-in, a process selling VSL, an implementation call, and you redirect them to your group or YouTube page. Now, this is some this is nothing new, right? As most of you guys have probably seen this funnel before, right? But and if you've tried to rely on this funnel, you may run out of money before becoming profitable. Okay. And this is why a lot of the people online. Um, stop running ads because they're like, oh, I'm going to just put up an ad. I'm going to put up a funnel and then I'm going to put up a booking link and then I'm going to just spend money. Oh my God, are you going to go broke? Oh my God. Because you, what you, especially if you're in a sophisticated market where people have been pitched and pitched times and time again, you will realize that people are numb to your message. Therefore, they may opt in. You may get insane amounts of opt-ins, amounts of leads, but no one will actually book a call. So you're just spending money expe expecting that technology is going to solve everything for you. For us, we've tried to stay away from it, okay? The difference that makes this funnel insanely more profitable is what happens after someone opts in, okay? And let me show you what happens. So uh, I believe that even though we want to do leverage stuff, you don't want to forget about um, about understanding that eventually when technology becomes um, like super used by everyone, you will, um, you essentially end up experiencing um, diminishing returns, right? So the more people who start using something, the, the less the thing will perform, right? Um, let me try to find it. Bah, 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 bah. Okay, I think it's here. Okay, I need to find this bad boy. Okay, no, I think it's here. There you go. Okay, so here is the difference. Uh, so a lot of people will just focus on generating the attention, getting the leads, implementation, and hoping everyone will convert. But for us, um, we've kind of like restructured this in a different way. And by the way, this same funnel is being used by Cole Gordon to get to $4 million a month. Uh, it's being used by everyone who's making millions of dollars per month. This is what they're doing. They're using ads but not really ads is not the goal is not to get ads to get you booked call the reason why they're using this funnel is to generally just focus on lead flow okay why are they not focusing on vsl funnels and things like that even though they're still going to have that vsl funnel there is because people are used to this people have become numb the same way that in 2020 if you try to sell facebook ad or in 2021 you try to sell facebook ad nobody would buy it because they just don't care enough so Instead, what you focus on is you generally just folk treat this like a lead gen funnel, okay? And the purpose is you get leads coming in every day, okay? I'll try to show you guys real quick. I'll show you guys our, our literally our Discord so you guys can kind of like look at some of the systems. Um, so let me show you. So what you want to do is uh, you want to have organic funnels, you know, just, just have the asset going. 
um now right now you know we have we're pushing the um the the challenge so we're getting a lot of opt-ins for the challenge but uh we're also pushing a training so what you want to do is you want to get uh leads coming in 2 53 a.m you want to have someone reach out uh Bernard opted in at 2.45. Someone opted in at, uh, I don't know, 2.39. Everyone gets reached out to. By who? By a growth specialist, right? Now, what you want to focus on is the is having someone reach out to every lead in 5 to 10 minutes, okay? What you're going to see is, depending, I'm going to give you guys our numbers, what we're averaging is a cost per lead that is like $7. So that means that if I spend $700, bucks, um, i am going to get 100 opt-ins, Okay. And we're getting a 30 to 40% reply rate on all the opt-ins that we get. So that means that for 100 opt-ins, I'm going to get 30 to 40 people reply. And one third of everyone who replied is going to book a call. So that means that out of 100 opt-ins, I end up with around 10 calls booked. And um, no, 10 qualified for a call. And then 80 to 100% will want to book a call. And then 6 to 8 um, will book a call. Okay? Now, compare this with a traditional path of spending 100 bucks a day on ads, waiting for someone to hopefully convert into a call. We don't want to be hopeful. We want control. Control is what? Is humans. As much as I said that humans are not enough leverage, but humans are more effective, in my opinion, than ads at low scale. One-on-one -on -one combat, one-on-one -on -one appointment setting, humans are going to beat any level of technology. Okay. So you don't want to be so much com sold onto leverage that you just think that what I'm selling you guys is, oh, you just need ads. Hell no. You're crazy if you think you just need ads. Okay? Right? So now, uh, I'm, I'm going to go over the, 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 the how this thing can become insanely profitable, right? But this is how people are able to spend 10 grand a day on ads, right? And comfortably maintain 116 to 80 bucks, $88 per booked call. Okay? Now, this is just one conversion mechanism. The next conversion mechanism is emails. So you want to push people to your email list. You want to push people to what? To your 12 email sequence. So we have something called the quasi-periodic email sequence in our program. And uh, we just get people to just send it. And then you also want to send people to your Facebook group. Why Facebook group? Because you're going to be putting out attention, generating sales assets, some content. You're going to have a GS there. You're going to have some retargeting ads there. So every time you put up a piece of content, someone engages with it. Then you start a conversation again. And then you try to do what? You try to book them on a call. So this conversion happens faster. But this also converts more leads over time. So even though I just showed you guys a six to eight uh, percent will book a call from all the opt-ins in the for in the following like two to three, four, five days, uh, we'll actually end up getting more conversions over time from other uh, long form and other um, future like um, initiatives or from content. Does that make sense? Okay. Um. You will get access to the Lucy chart. Yeah, you get access to the Lucy chart in the VIP. I've shared it on Circle. Okay. What about appointment setting with powered by training GPT? Oh my God. Um, guys, <laughs> I know everybody is kind of like it will eventually will AI become super powerful where it can take over like the role of appointment setting? Yes. But we're not there yet. So don't worry about that. Okay. So uh, now let me show you guys some of the numbers so I can just show you guys how crazy this thing works, okay? So let's compare cold outbound. And these are live metrics from my team, okay? Look at these numbers. Um, and this is the same timeline, by the way, okay? So a thousand, this is like over like 20 days or so, uh, 1,100 outreach people reached out to. 200 people responded, which is 17% reply rate. Uh, how many? What was the qualification of everyone reached out to or out of everyone who responded? 2%. And then uh, booking requested, 2%, right? And then uh, how many book calls uh, booked? 11 calls, which is 1% of the total of outreach, right? So you do 1,000 outreach, you get 26 qualified leads, you send 20 of them a booking a link, and then you book them uh, on a call. Does that make sense? This is from cold outreach. Now, compare that to inbound. 114 people reached out to. 
56 of them replied, which is a 49% reply rate. Okay? 9% qualification rate. So out of 56 people, we got 10%. Uh, no, uh, 10, 10 people to be qualified. Nine of them were sent a booking link because they were interested in learning more. And five of them booked a call. So 4% of everyone we reached out to booked a call compared to um, to uh, to one percent here. Okay, so here are the numbers. Ten times. So the the person here, which is the same person, this is the same GS, uh, reached out to ten times more people. Okay, to get four times more replies, so ten times more energy, to only get four x the responses, to only get one point five more qualified people. Okay, and only to get two times more calls. Who here would want to work 10 times harder only to get 2x on their desired outcome? Does this, would anyone want to keep doing this if they can do this? Let me know in the chat. Yeah, this is not, uh, yeah, we're not tracking uh, cash collected. Um, or here, so don't don't focus on these metrics, right? Um, those numbers are not being focused, acquired, right? This is what I mean by leverage. The same person works ten times less, but gets fifty percent the same outcomes, right? Another example: cold outreach. Fourteen hundred people reached out to. Okay. 10% reply rate, which is a lot worse than this one. Which This one was actually pretty good, in my opinion, okay? And then 1% uh, were qualified. Booking requested. Um, see, this one shouldn't make sense because uh, I think it was maybe like a... Anyway, so 32 people, 17 calls booked. Same thing, 1% calls people booked. Here, the person reached out to 125 uh, opt-ins. 43 people reply, which is a 34% reply rate. 8% uh, were qualified, 10% 10 people. Uh, 13 booking links sent, 8 calls booked. 6% booking rate from all opt-ins. Here we have a 1%. So this person did 11 times more effort here, more energy spent, more time here, only to experience. Here they booked 8 calls. Here they booked 17 calls. But here they had to reach out to 1,400 people, 1,400 people, when here they only had to reach out to 125, which this can literally be done in a day. This cannot be done in a day, okay? Would you rather one day worth of effort to get you 50% of the work, or would you rather just keep doing some uh, unleveraged work like this, okay? So this is what I mean by um, the goal is efficiency, not scaling for the scale, the sake of scaling, Okay, the cost to experience the goal dictates the worthiness of the goal. Let me repeat this. The cost to experience the goal dictates the worthiness of the goal. If you told me, hey, sir, to make a million dollars a month, you're going to have to work 100 hours a week. You're going to have to wake up stressed. You're going to have to do this. I'd be like, hey, uh, I'm actually pretty good with 20K a month. So you can you can keep your million dollar goal. Right. No investor would invest money and time in an opportunity that doesn't provide an impressive ROI. That's why the best value investors will literally go years without with doing nothing. No investments. Like Warren Buffett will literally spend like five years. I don't know exactly the timeline, but he will spend years not doing any investment because he don't want to confuse movement with progress. Okay? You don't want to confuse movement, a lot of movement, with actual progress. And this is what a lot of people do. Now, you will never get to know this if you don't even track your metrics in the first place. So if you have a shitty tracking uh, systems, that's the thing you solve. Because you don't want to be the, you want to, want to be running around like a headless chicken. Being like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so, I'm grinding every day. Okay, so what? Good job. Good job, man. The great job. You're busy. Iman just bought a new GT3. Do you think he's busy? He's on a yacht. 
Do you think he's busy? Do you think Hormozzi, when he's writing his book, do you think he's not making millions? He's making mills. More money than when he was flying around gyms. Ah, I can close all the deals. Give me 100 a month, right? It's a matter of like, what are you putting your time to? Are you investing your time in the thing that gives you the biggest ROI? Okay? Hard work means nothing. Okay? I don't, I don't care if you guys are working hard. So what? I woke up today. Guys, you guys want me to tell you what I did today? Let me tell you. Let me show you guys what I did. I woke up. I left my phone on that couch yet back there, okay? And I, you know, woke up. I went with my computer in my bedroom because I don't have a, because I don't have a clock. So I need to check what time I wake up, okay? But I don't have a thing. And I just opened up my computer. I just finalized this presentation today, right? But by the time I actually checked, um, like um like the platform like the the discord uh you know we had made how much in revenue i'm not i'm not sure if you guys are going to see it but if you guys can see it we we are at 16k for the day okay so and then the day before i don't know if you guys can see it 14k the day before 14k so it's like did, did you guys see me hustling hard yesterday right no it's not about hard work it's about Doing the one thing that changes everything, okay? You got to be an investor with your time. Do not try to be uh, uh, like a hustler. Nobody cares. Nobody, you, you, anyway, I could go on and on about this. But if you want to get rich fast, you can't just focus on volume. You have to focus on asymmetrical re re returns, which means that you're getting one input. Let's say I worked hard. I hire people once, but then they keep building things forever to give us a bigger output, okay? So we're chasing the most leverage on our decisions and money, and most importantly, time. Why? Because the goal is to be present, not to be a slave to success. And I swear to God, I see so many people who are slaves to success. They're like, it's a never-ending flywheel. It's a never-ending, it's a never-ending right race where they're like, no, I need to work hard. I need to, I need, I need, I need bigger month after month. No, it's like, no, you can just set up infrastructure so you scale uh, more effortlessly. Okay. So um, now a lot of the biggest bottleneck uh, or the biggest question a lot of people say is like, oh, I'm not sure if I should spend the little money I have on ads. Who here would have this question where they're like, um, like, hey, I don't know if I should have, you know, I don't know if I should spend money on ads. Okay. Well, let me show you guys the unit economics of the build and release offer. Okay. The most wonderful thing about the build and release offer, which I shared in um, here. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. If you guys were not there on day one, uh, you need a build and release offer because you want to be able to take your clients from where they're at to inevitably helping them get to their desired outcome. Okay. And how do you do it? You simply, um, you know, you stack a bunch of mechanisms. I'm trying to go, I'm trying to see if I can find it. So you take care of everything. You build the the media buy for them. You place setters for them. You do the branding. You do the marketing. You do the, you place, you become the operator for them. You build the system for them, right? But you do it in a leveraged way, okay? So um, let's go back on here. You're paid to acquire clients. And this is something that actually got, um, Hormozzi calls it client acquisition fine fine like client acquisition what is it what does it call it again client acquisition fine finest acquisition finest client acquisition or whatever essentially just means the client actually pays for his own acquisition okay and here's the thing so let's look at someone who has five hundred dollars uh in ads budget okay so on an average cost per lead which is six bucks you'll get 75 leads let's say 10 to 20 percent are booked on a call which is seven to 10, 10, seven to 15 calls based on our value funnel metrics. But this can be higher than uh, than this in competitive markets. So I showed you guys people in the local businesses who are booking 50% of all the leads that come in, okay? Now, let's say you have a 20% closing rate. That means that you'll close one to three clients. If your average ticket price is 10K, right? Not including performance, uh, you can take this funnel, these many leads and this budget and generate an extra 10K to 30K in revenue from ads, right? So that means that, that that gives you the following outcomes. You liquidate the cost 
of ads. 5% goes to a setter, which let's say on one deal, 5% of 10K becomes 500 bucks. 10% to 15% goes to a closer, which is 1K to 1.5K. And then 505% is the ad cost. So the total cost per acquisition becomes 2,000 bucks, okay? And the deal is worth 10 grand. So that means that before cost to fulfill, you're profiting 8,000 bucks, which is 80%, okay? The cost to fulfill will be, let's say 2.5 to 3K, right? Per deal. That means that you're profiting 5,000 bucks for every 10 grand, for every 10K deal that you acquire, right? Would you find 500 bucks if it could generate you an extra five grand? An extra 15 grand? Because this 500 bucks generated these many calls, right? If you close one or three out of these calls, then you don't just close one 10K deal. You can close up to three of them. And now you're spending 500 bucks to close 15K, right? And the, even a better question is how long would you keep finding the 500 bucks to keep spending on ads to make this type of return? Where every time you invest money, you make 10X the money back, right? Well, the goal is you keep spending money as long as you're profitable on the front end. What do I mean by that is you keep acquiring clients, you keep acquiring customers until you're profitable on the front end, which will be for a long while at least. Eventually, this will not necessarily consistently stay this profitable over time, but uh, this is a good uh, thing for you to understand, right? So you don't, you guys need to understand that when you have a build and release offer, you're not paying for shit. All you need to do is find a credit card, put the credit card on, on, on Facebook, on Meta, or whichever platform you want to advertise on, get the leads, get the growth specialist to reach out in five minutes, okay? Set the calls, get on a call. No, don't get on a call. Get a closer to get on a call. Let them close the deal and then just cash collect and get your fulfillment team to deliver, okay? Now, I want to talk about Felix's and... Um, case study and story and Felix's and Jolie story. Um, but before I kind of like do so, I kind of like want to show you guys uh, a little bit of the before state and then Jolie and Felix, I'm going to get you guys in and you guys can kind of like, we can have a chat. So um, by the way, Felix and Jolie partnered up before they joined the program and uh, wanted to kind of like build a, um, they were going after coaches and consultants, right? And uh, F Felix, I guess, you know, I'm like going to ask you this question, but I'm curious to know how many programs you've bought before. But, I, you know, I feel like Felix was uh, the type of a founder who just constantly invests in himself to try to achieve success. Right. But, um, you know, before he joined or by the time that's my they said, that's my bank balance going from 15K uh, from this to 15K cash collected. So he literally had two point seven dollars euros in his bank account. Right. And then um, last month, like 10 days ago, he said, we just hit 10, 20 K in sales today. Main problem right now are our time, not cash related, right? So imagine going from this to this, sending this message is pretty interesting. And, uh, you know, the issue with the coaching and consulting space for everyone who's listening to this, I highly suggest you guys pay attention to what I'm about to say. It's become super, super ex competitive, okay? Only the top 1% of growth agencies, growth consultants and coaches get 90% of the market due to their brand. Let me repeat this. Most of the marketplace in the current who's targeting coaches, agencies, and this is one thing I want you guys to understand. Just because I'm helping agencies or I'm helping consultants does not mean you should go and do the same as me. Okay. I have an edge. I have leverage. You do not. So do not try to go into spaces just because someone is making millions thinking that you're going to also make millions. No, it will not work. Right. So. Uh, and then also the other thing is most coaches are actually broke, right? So what we did is we helped them after like a few weeks, we realized like, hey, this is this is this this acquisition, this niche is not really working out. So we switched them to solar uh, because anyone who's ever heard Peter Thiel say this, but he says that competition is for losers, right? If you're in a space where it's super competitive, then everybody just trying to is they have a race to the bottom, right? 
meaning everybody's just undercutting themselves. They're just saying, oh, I'll refund you 5,000 bucks if it doesn't work. I'm like, come on, guys. Like, please respect yourselves, okay? So the easiest win for some of y'all who are listening to this right now or watching this uh, is just switch and go after a niche that have a little bit more uh, less competition, right? Target less competitive industries that are heavily reliant on lead flow and sales and just go build their client acquisition infrastructure. The same thing I just showed you guys today and I'm going to show you guys over the next few days. You guys can go sell it for like thousands and thousands of dollars, 10, 15 grand, 25K. You just need to apply it to a better, better, uh, better market. Okay. And then if you, if you're someone who sells a convenience offer, meaning you don't actually bring value to someone. Like you don't, uh, you don't necessarily grow their revenue uh, directly. Um, you you shouldn't sell this unless you have status, aka brand, or you're selling status. Meaning, the person who sells Rolexes is not selling time. Like he's not trying to sell you for you to be able to tell time. What he's selling you is, is his status, and the people buying status don't care about money. They're just going to buy it regardless. So. You don't sell a convenience offer unless you're selling status or you have status, okay? So, um, Felix, uh, before I go over your and break down your funnel and Jolie, I would love to kind of like you guys kind of like can, um, I think you guys, yeah, love to kind of like share your story. I think it's going to be super exciting for everyone here. Um, first of all, how did you first meet? How did you guys meet? Mm, actually, like we've been... I would just go first. So uh, we've been like in contact since like two, three years because like we long story short, we've all, uh, we've both been in business for the past five years. And um, I've done a lot of business models myself. So I started out with dropshipping, e-commerce, FBA. Like I spent over 30 grand on courses, as you <laughs> guess, <laughs> I spent a lot on courses as well. And um, yeah, like, uh, two years ago we worked on a project together so there was like one online shop i built and jolly was kind of uh, freelancing i was one of her clients in that sense and uh, yeah like since then we've been in contact by the way the project failed so like i, I didn't really get to sell a lot so um, but fast forward to like four months ago we actually uh, kind of met again and uh, decided to do this together. So like we actually were both working in the agency space with coaches and I was doing more of like a appointment setting thing, whereas Jolie was basically doing Facebook ads for coaches. And then we actually decided to go for your program. So been part of your uh, earlier program before that. And then we decided to join GCP basically, which turned out to be really good decision. Honestly, like <laughs> best decision ever. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Jolie, so how long had you had you been uh, helping the coaches uh, with Facebook ad before? Um, so I've been in the. I mean, I've been doing media buying for um coaches and consultants for the past two years and a half. I started out as a freelancer when I met Felix. Um, then switched to the agency model, and yeah, the biggest bottleneck has been so you know, schedule call consistently and scale predictably, basically. So yeah. and I felt like enhancing the offer was kind of the thing that would make things change. And so when I, when I, four months ago, when I started working with Felix, we said, okay, let's come up with a better offer. And that's probably going to help us get more lead flow and more call schedule, but yeah. it wasn't really the case. So it was just, the, yeah. Yeah. Really which is an interesting case. thing, um, which did you just said, because, um, if you are in a niche and you I can, you know, you guys can share your experience within the coaching and consulting space. Um, even when the offer was good, how hard was it to still get even leads and appointments? Yeah, it's been crazy. Like, like we, we tried for one and a half months. So like we literally like spend every day, two hours with the appointment setters on calls and training them. Like we had, I think at the start, we had seven setters and we let like three of them go, it was four setters. And um, we actually also started ads. And in total, in one and a half months, we booked, I think, five calls it was, Jolie, like like yeah. something like that. And most of them were unqualified, like brokies. And um, compare that to 
what's going on right now. Like what, so for me, what I really, cause I want to, I want in your own words, or at least like what has been the shift from going from an industry where it's like super, super competitive to, and like working hard, like grinding it out to pivoting to what you guys are, to the businesses you guys are helping. Like how did you, how did the perspective shift around what it actually takes to win? Mm. Like what, what, what was the shift of like, okay, let's switch offer, let's switch niches and like seeing the amount of lead flow and the amount of appointments in the following 24 hours. It mm -hmm. was, was pretty wild. I mean, I, I mean, we launched the ad, we, we were running ads again for coaches and we got some level of result, but nothing close to what we saw when we changed our offer and the markets. And just for me, I think the biggest, but the picture was realizing that I don't need to do everything the hard way because I've always said like I need to close the calls I need to uh you know work with a bunch of appointment setters to get those calls scheduled in the first place and just going from having to and that's why we also did when we started working together and just going from having to do everything myself to drive some growth to actually having a team uh, mm -hmm. or having automation in place you know to you know nurture the lead and um, the sms reminders and the closer that's closing the call um just like it's just been a complete <laughs> yeah completely mind blown by how um effortless it was you know to get those results i mean we, we had a lot of work that we put in but we had the same level of work that we put in beforehand but we didn't get as much results so we mm -hmm. worked the same but we got like 100x results compared to what we had before you know yeah it was pretty yeah. pretty awesome yeah felix what was your experience how did you feel to go from 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 a being about to die <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> not to like seeing that, <laughs> to seeing yeah. that type of lead flow and that type of uh, volume of appointments and even cash collected. Yeah, yeah, like incredible. Like honestly, like we, I remember we turned the ads on for for the solar, and we were still like on the verge of okay, should we go fully in on this or should we still remain with coaches? So we did both for a while actually, and <laughs> oh. like five euros spent, or not, not even, not even like like I think it was two euros spent first appointment booked and i wrote it to casey so <laughs> and um yeah like it was just sick and then like like from there it was literally like five to ten appointments per day and um, now now it's like just we're used to it like now it's now it's just like we we got to close them down and we got to yeah like but, but now we're, now... we have just different different challenges now it's just exactly. it's, long opposition. Yeah. it's more like fulfillment and delivery so it's been it's been yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And uh, what are some of the some of the learnings that, you know, maybe, you know, I can get, you know, Joey can go first. Like, what is some of the what are some what are some of the beliefs that have changed since you guys have kind of like seen the recent success? And what are some of the lessons that I may not necessarily know what to ask you guys? Like, what are some of, if you guys were to kind of like give an advice to the you before you made this switch or to you before you implemented ads and everything like that, what would you guys say it was? Jolie, you can go first. Yeah, I think the first belief definitely for me was just um, be in the right community and just get mentorship and guidance because uh, sometimes you feel like something is not working and you feel like you are doing something wrong or that you are not skilled enough or that you're not capable of making things work and you feel like you have to work harder but just having the right mentor just can that can get you into the right direction can make a biggest difference so for me that's even though i've invested myself into different mentorship and coaching and programs over the past four years it's just like the level of support that you've been getting it's just i mean i'm just like i'm overwhelmed it's just i mean it's, yeah. it's absolutely mind-blowing and so that's i think that has been the biggest thing because um just knowing that if you have a challenge you can go and ask a question and get a clear answer in terms of what the next step should be and tons of clarity in terms of what you actually should do yeah it's been amazing so that's what for me would be the first thing like get like a high level mentorship because that's just insanely valuable um and the second thing is definitely to just just it, it I, I mean i think i think you've said it once um but it's like so people that are winning are not necessarily working harder than you are or they're not more talented than you are and it's just that they have a better they have better insight they have better strategy so sometimes when we 
we do things and they're not, it hasn't worked for a while. We think, okay, I just need to keep on doing the same thing and just work a whole lot harder. But when you look at someone that's winning or people that are winning, just ask yourself, are they actually working a whole lot harder than I am? Or are they using more leverage, more system, yeah. um, better, you know, better offer, better, better market events, you know, to succeed in, the, in this, in this space. So for me, kind of, because I've been doing this for the past two years and a half, you know, the agency model for coaches. And even though, you know, I made money, I was, I had client, I was, it was growing, but it was really growing like, very slowly, not at the space yeah. that I, I wanted it to be. And just seeing what happened uh, last month and where it, it just kind of the traction that you're getting, it's just like, wow, this could have been a whole lot easier if I had the better better guidance, you know, yeah. better mindset, better belief uh, in terms of what's required to succeed. So, I mean, those, those are the key things. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Um, mm -hmm. Felix, what about you? Yeah, I'll copy that. Like, honestly, it would have not been the same by far like without your guys help and like without the whole thing here like because it's yeah like the, the support is just incredible it's just another level and i mentioned it i spent a lot on coaching before but this is just like next level stuff here and it's, it's incredible what you've built so yeah like honestly having having the support and having like a clear roadmap step by step where where from where you are to where you want to be and all these systems are already kind of in place what's not in place yet has to be built in a way but like we get all the support and yeah it's just next level here so yeah. and then also um just taking things one step at a time so because i've been uh talking about that with casey for a bit and like you shout out to him so like he really pushed us hard and um yeah, really supported us during the tough times. <laughs> and yeah, but like taking things one step at a time, because like if you look at the whole picture at once, then damn, it can be really overwhelming. Like right now, we're also going through a phase where it's kind of a lot. But if you just take one step in front of the next and keep on going, then like there's nothing stopping you from getting there. So yeah, yeah, no. Basically. And are you, yeah, you, I mean, you guys killed it. Like, good job and it's it's not even about i see a lot of people are like oh like is it is it um like giving me shiny object like it shouldn't be about the niche it's not really about the niche it's also one thing you guys have to understand is um how many people are actually in solar and can't even get nothing from it right it's also about jolie and felix it's not just about you you don't just you're not just going to go after solar and think you're going to make money no trust me it's going to just be the same thing as uh, coaches and consultants so you need to genuinely be good and to offer a niche something valuable and you need to be the person who deserves their 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 business okay so i don't want you guys to see this as a oh it's a solar case study it's not a solar case study it's a it's people who've been grinding for the last two and a half years three years four years trying to start a business and all that time has compounded to in one decision in one pivot it has compounded to Everything just hit once and all their experience, they took it, put it into a better vehicle, into a better offer, into a better industry, and they got what they deserved. So if you guys do not have anything that makes you deserving, the niche is not going to make you successful. Just like there are people who are serving agencies and are still broke till this day. Some of them may be on this call. <laughs> There are people <laughs> serving people in the coaching and consulting space, making what? A million dollars a month. And there are others who can't even make three grand a month. It's not about the niche. It's not about the offer. It's about your offer. It's about what you deliver. It's like, how valuable are you? Right? So do not think that, like, I'm not trying to take away. I don't want to take away from the entrepreneurs running the businesses like it's the people it's not the niche but i want to show you guys um a, a funnel breakdown that i did for uh for felix's and Jolie's funnel because uh on a call i was just trying to break down their transformation and um and essentially this was maybe like when they had collected like their first um 15 20k so it's so after that they spent more money on ads but they had spent essentially 2k on ads uh, the average cost per lead was six point five dollars, and euros or whatever you can just enter switch uh, the the currency. Uh, average cost per booked call was twelve dollars. They had booked one hundred sixty nine calls, and here is the thing: 
the first 80 plus calls or the in total out of the 169 they had a pretty bad show rate uh but 80 calls so let's say around 50 percent of all the calls they had taken them themselves right or around it was like a few weeks or maybe a month timeline and they had no closed deal so when we see that we're like hey forget this let's get a closer in the goal was not oh felix or Jolie, hey, let's spend some time and teach you guys how to sell. No way. No way. That's not, nobody has time to do that, right? I don't have time to do that. I could get someone to help them build a sales script. We do have sales scripts. We do have everything. But to become a good closer, it takes like 500 sales calls. We ain't got time to waste that many sales calls. So what we do is get them to build a hiring scorecard, get them to get closers to apply, find the best closers who have already closed in the solar niche, and look at this. The following 25 calls were taken by a closer, 14, which represents 14% of calls uh, that were totally booked. No, no, no. Like 14% uh, of the ones that actually showed up were taken by the closer. And out of 25 calls, five deals came out of it, which is a 20% closing rate. Okay? And then uh, since... Out of 2K to get uh, on an average call, so they got 25 calls and the average cost per book call was $12. That means that to get these 25 calls that ended up as five deals, it actually only costed them $375, right? To get the calls that were taken by the closer. So technically, if you really look at the, I mean, of course, the total acquisition cost is going to be the 2K ads and the com compensation. But if you were to look at, the money spent on the calls that were taken with someone who could close, it's only $375 invested. And they were able to cash collect $20,000 in 11 days and a percentage on performance. So they have a performance deal. That means that they got a 53x return on investment on this $375 investment invested, right? $375 bucks invested, get the leads, get the appointments to make 20K cash. Overall ROI is like 10x, two grand on ads, 20K cash collected, right? And this is what I want you guys to see. It is not expensive. It is, I mean, is it not expensive? It is expensive if you try to just go close everything and you don't know how to close and you just try to get thinking that, okay, just booking calls is going to make you, uh, this is going to get solve the problem for your business growth. No, it is not. You need to solve every single area of your business, which is what we focus on, Okay. Now, uh, let's go and assemble everything together, okay? Um, I want to go over this funnel. And uh, just quickly, important, before I go over the actual structure and everything, if you're in a niche that doesn't have much competition, you don't need to, uh, you don't need all of this to get results. Some clients will just, um, some clients we just put up a no-brainer offer, right? Add going up, we put up a lead form, a call funnel, and it's printing calls, which is the case for Liel, um, at scaleimpact.io and uh, they're literally fully booked out for the next week which should be um, so they were thinking of they were still booked out that they were trying to open up for the month following month right and so it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have this whole thing set up but the reason why I still suggest you guys set up this funnel and by funnel I'm not talking about an actual like landing page I'm talking about the whole thing is because you end up with a problem of show up rates, okay? And this is what happens for Liel. Uh, we need to get feedback on how to improve show up rate as most calls are a no show. Even though they spent 300 bucks and got 51 sales calls, if no, none of them show up, then it doesn't make any sense. So that's why I highly suggest you guys go and implement this funnel, okay? So let's go over the funnel real quick together and then we're gonna solve the money. All right, so let's go over this. Okay, cool. So um, there is beauty in simplicity and keeping things simple. So for me, what I really like to call this, this value call, this value funnel really is really simple. You have one asset, you have one funnel. The goal is to change one belief or to convey one message and you have one conversion workflow, right? So 
what is the one asset? The one asset, by what I mean by one asset is um, you need to have an asset that allows you to change your niche's beliefs. So as an example, it, for me, for let's say for you guys, the thing that I really want you guys to understand is you need a build and release offer. No, man, no matter how you want to put it, um, I'm going to put this guy, I'm going to hide this. Um, so no matter how you want to put it, nothing is going to matter about client acquisition and everything like that until you guys change your offers because you guys are not going to be able to afford the lead cost, the appointment setter cost, the closing cost if you don't have enough money per deal. So for me, what I would do is I would build a sales asset or process selling a VSL or an educational VSL, right? That goes over uh, a specific case study or a process, okay? A process around how to get more appointments, a process how to get more appointments to show up, a process around how to charge more money, okay? But it needs to be the thing that the market cares the most about, okay? Or I can just use a case study. So if I wanted to get more clients in the solar industry, then I would probably push the uh, uh, Felix's and Jolie case study. And then I would put it on a funnel and it would literally look something like this. Um, so it would look something like this as an example, right? And I'm just going to create the best asset that I can create. I'm going to put it on a landing page. I'm going to drive traffic to it, okay? Uh, the value VSL structure, um, which is something I'd love to give you guys the structure of the VSL, but uh, unfortunately, a lot of people pay a lot of money for that. So I'm not necessarily going to go over that. Um, but the thing you guys really want to, focus on when you're building it out is the following. You need a headline and that headline needs to be a how-to headline, okay? How to achieve X without doing whatever. Why is that important? Because in the newspaper, uh, they realized that the best performing headlines were a how-to headlines. So do not try to craft it a certain ways, just do the how-to, okay? And then the first thing you need to do in the first three, 60 seconds of launching, starting your asset, your value video, you want to show proof. If you don't have proof, I'm sorry, but you're not going to, it's not going to work as well. Okay. And then you also want to call out who this is for, right? And then you want to clarify the outcome of the asset that they're about to watch. And then there is something called the education phase. And then you have the CTA. So this is kind of like briefly, I'm going to show you guys on the actual asset because I have a few checklists on here. Um, what you want to do on the asset is, you know, you choose your insight. The insight can either be um, a case study or a process. You need to create your value VSL, which is headline, proof, proof of claim, and then also add in some social proof, client results, right? You want to call out who this is for. You want to clarify what they'll get out of the asset, the training. And then you have education phase. You will have... Um, because each single, for for a belief to be like installed in someone's mind, you can't just rely on one example like, oh, you need to run ads. No, you need to have multiple angles for you to change uh, their beliefs. So you probably may need to have analogies, right? But then you have different stories at each step, okay? And you do it three times. First, maybe you may need to explain the, the offer. Then you may need to explain the importance of having content up front. Then you may need to explain the importance of leverage with ads, right? The same process that I've walked you guys through over the last three days is the same thing that you guys need to do in one single video. It could be 20 minutes. It could be 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. And then the call to action. What I really like with um, the call to action of, um, of this value funnel is uh, or the VSL actually? I can actually show you guys this one real quick because it's going to be super super helpful. I'm going to show you guys how I do call to action. So, uh, because yeah, I think this one is super valuable. I can't. I think it's gonna. It would be a. It would be a disservice for me not to show you guys. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm gonna see. I'm going to show you exactly the thing because this one is really good. So when I'm doing a, a call to action, I like to do the following. Okay. And I'm going to do it right now. I'm actually going to add it on the actual thing right now. 
So for those who have actual access to the VIP ticket, you guys are going to be able to access this call to action structure, right? Um, so look at this. What I like to do is the following. I like to present the growth formula, which I've talked about before in my content on Webby's everywhere. Okay. You don't want to sell people like, hey, book a call. No, that's 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 too basic. Nobody's going nobody's gonna fall for that. Okay. What you want to do is the following. You want to explain to people that the definition of intelligence and which is equal to the definition of growth comes from rate of learning plus the rate of change. Meaning, in order for someone to grow their business, they need to learn a lot and then they need to change even faster, right? The quality of the insights, the speed at which they acquire the insights, the volume of insights, and the how the, the quality of the actions, the speed at which they change, and the volume of repetition they put in is what leads to someone making 10K a month, 100K a month, 500K a month, okay? You can't just focus, because if you try to just focus on learning how to make 100K a month, 500K a month, like you guys are learning today, you guys are not going to make 100K, 500K a month. I can promise you that. The only reason you guys are going to make half a mil a month is if you match the learnings with the behaviors, Okay, so I just told you that, right? So what I like to do is I like to offer the opportunity to people who want to change, not just learn, the ability to have a walkthrough or an implementation call uh, where I actually walk them through how to. Um, I like to solve the second layer of the, uh, of, the, of the formula of growth on a call, right? That's how I position it. So you guys are getting the knowledge. Now you need execution, right? And then I give also like the, the bonuses of what they get on a call. And then what I also like to do at the end is um, is just, you know, just put some limitations. Like, hey, 35% of calls get automatically canceled. 50% don't go past our discovery vetting process, which is not fake scarcity, by the way. Like it's generally true because we cannot help everyone and not everyone is ready for the help. So uh, that also kind of like limits it. And um, I like to put value. So like, that's how I would like you guys to start positioning your call to actions. Do not just try to say someone, hey, book a call so I can sell you something. No, here is why you should book a call because this is the un underlying truth, right? And for you guys, when it comes to the funnel, uh, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to go to the next step. Is this helpful, by the way? Is that call to action helpful? Perfect. Beautiful. Yeah, I just wanted to, to show you guys a better call to action, which is less salesy. It's actually just based on facts and it just it's just more it's just a lot more attractive. Okay. So when it comes to this funnel that you guys have here, uh it's really simple. Um make sure you're getting people's um for name, email, uh phone number, okay. It is super important to get the phone number because I'll show you guys that we don't actually do outreach on uh, much social. We don't. We just actually move things to to text. So you want to make sure that you're saying, "Hey, we need your um, phone number to give you the act assets." Okay. Uh, so you need. Um, and then by the way, if you guys get access to NBL for those who are in natural born leader subscription, where you like paying the forty nine dollars a week, you guys get access to the snapshot. And if you're in GCP. Um, you guys get actually the, the whole thing, okay? So you guys don't need to rebuild everything. Um, main page, VSL page, and a thank you page. I can, I'm not going to show you guys right now, but you guys could get access to that uh, some other time. Um, promotion. So you need the funnel. Promotion, here is how you need to think about it. You're going to need to promote organically and with paid ads. It's not just a one or the other. You need to go on social media. You need to add the link in bio everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, I don't really care. And then every week, what you want to do is you want to promote on your stories and just literally be like, hey, I just created this new training. Click the link. Go check it out. Okay. In your long form videos on YouTube, you want to embed every the link to the asset on every video in every podcast. If you do podcasts on Spotify, make sure that the link under that, that podcast episode is the actual asset. Okay. And on your email list, you want to make sure that you're promoting it one to three times a week, right? Why are we doing this? Because we want to get as many opt-ins as possible every single day. 
uh, paid ads, ad creative campaign structure is really simple. This is actually pretty simple, right? Paid ads, you need an ad creative, you need a campaign structure, which is just focused on traffic. And what you want to focus on is the following. You want to make sure that the lead cost is 10% or lower of your cost per booked call. So if 150 bucks is spent on ads, it gets you a booked call um, directly or with a GS, do you want to aim to have $15 or less cost per lead? Okay. Why is that super important? Because it allows us to have a funnel that is scalable. If your lead cost is 50 bucks, I'm sorry, but you're not going to scale this, right? If you're getting 50 bucks per lead, yeah, it's not going to be scalable. Okay. Now, when it comes to co conversion, you really want to really focus on two things. You want to have your nurturing automated emails, SMS, and you want to have the appointment flow, right? I'm going to show you guys on the actual doc because this is what you guys will have access to. Okay, so um, so funnel creation, direct people to the groups. You're going to need a headline. You're going to need a host and your Enricia CTA I want implemented. Um, promo, really simple. Add to your IG on YouTube, CTA push weekly emails. And then for uh, ads examples, I'm going to show you guys real quick. Uh, we have this note ads. I'm sure you guys have seen it, which is performing really well, right? Um well, I think I can, yeah, I could, I could show you guys the cost per lead, but I'm going to show you guys later. Uh, but this ad has really working pretty well, right? The ad structure. And then also for those who have access to the VIP ticket, you guys are going to be able to access this doc, which is like an example of um, of a coaching ad. No, it's uh, we Actually, we've started doing documentation of ads uh, in different industries, solar, real estate, home remodeling, SaaS, recruiting, chiropractor, med spa, agency owners, closers. Um, and you know, whoever has access to the VIP ticket, you guys are going to be accessing the actual, um, example of an ad copy framework. So just to give you guys a, a little bit of more help on it. Okay. Uh, but anyway, for the ad, you guys want to have a somewhat call out the ideal prospect. You want to have the how to, you want to make sure that you're promoting the download or receive asset. Okay. You do not want to pitch book a call, right? Because if you book pitch book a call, the cost per lead is going to go what through the roof. We don't want to deal with that. We want a lot of lead flow. We don't care about booked call because the GS team, the systems are going to take care of converting them into a call, right? You want to increase the perceived value by sharing the cost in time or money um, that you have spent or invested in accessing and building that insight. So as an example. Right now, this growth uh, creator challenge that we're doing, you know, I don't know how many pages we're at, but um, we're, what, 101 pages in? So it's like, you know, I built, I created these things over the last two weeks. So it's like, no matter how you want to put it, I had to spend some time creating this asset. So when I do go and sell it, you can't say that it's not worth something, right? So you want to actually mention it like, hey, I spent two weeks and however money building this out or this thing has made me millions of dollars to understand all these things. And then that will increase the perceived likelihood of someone clicking and giving you their information, right? Um, this is the campaign structure. Okay, cool. So when it comes to conversion, nurturing flow, first email should be to invite people to the Facebook group, okay? The second email should be to sell an implementation call. So that you should add a call to action in your second email. And then the following email should generally be about case studies and more content to nurture your um, your leads. When it comes to appointment setting, you need a few things. You need to set up a notification channel, okay, that I showed you earlier on Discord or Slack. You can do it wherever. And then you want to make sure that your team or you have someone who's reaching out in less than five minutes. If you reach out more, like if it takes you more than 10 minutes to reach out, don't use this funnel. Just generally give up. Like, don't do not do anything. If you do not respect this rule of five to 10 minute reach out, speed to lead uh, thing, insight, this will not work. You will go broke, not making money. The sooner you reach out to someone, the faster they're going to reply, okay? And then you want to have your team leave um, an emoji when they reach out or leave an X when they haven't, uh, when they can't find a lead, okay? Um, 
we pr pr primarily right now are relying on SMS, on WhatsApp and iMessage or Telegram. We're not necessarily calling people. A lot of people are doing outbound DAO. We're not doing that. You need to be tracking your output like a hawk, okay? If you try, if you're not tracking your, your this these metrics, uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can show you guys something. Um, so this is like a this is like a KPI sheet, social tracker outreach sheet that we use for um, to track everything. We track code outbound, okay? I'm gonna show you guys. We track cold outbound. We track organic opt-ins. We track paid ads leads. We track Facebook group members. We track two steps. We track everything. Everything has to be dependent on these metrics. If you're not tracking, you don't. You're not gonna scale. I promise you that. Okay. So you need the system. Conversation workflow is what we do for these leads. The first, the process, you know, I've have I've have a lot of assets around conversation workflows. Uh, I think this is something you guys can get if you guys ever join Natural Born Leader or you ever work with us. We can help you guys craft your uh, conversion scripts. But here is the thought process around the the workflow because this one is going to be super important too. You do not want to start the conversation by, "Hey, uh, I just saw that you just um, opted in. Would you like to book a call?" No way. Instead, what you want to do is you want to offer a gift. You know, be like, hey, I saw that you opted into the trained, um, you know, train. You opted into the growth creator challenge. Would you like for us to? Uh, would you like the doc that we use to create the training? Right. Most people will do what? Will say yes. Why would someone say no to that? And then you want to find inefficiencies in their business. You'd be like, okay, cool. What are you? Where are you at in business? What are you struggling with? And then they're going to tell you what they're struggling with. Then you want to leverage those inefficiencies and tell them like, hey. You know, you could actually get better results if you had a build and release offer and you leveraged ads and you leveraged your growth specialist and a closer, right? Would you like to have a call and have the team walk you through that? People will be like, well, of course, right? So you guys are going to need a growth specialist. You guys are going to need a notification channel. You guys are going to need to keep your team accountable to reaching out fast enough. Uh, you guys are going to need to track your metrics. You guys, you know, are going to need something like the social outreach tracker. You guys are going to need the conversation workflow. You guys are going to need to have inefficiencies. As an example, it could be, hey, what are you relying on to acquiring leads? What the volume of the leads? What's the cost of the leads? Are you managing everything yourself? How long have you been using this method or strategy? Have you looked into more efficient and cost-effective methods? Okay. And then you want to offer a walkthrough, right? Use inefficiencies against the prospect, offer a walkthrough implementation of new and better approach, wait for the for the yes, do not pitch the link before they say yes, and then give them the link. Follow up every 24 hours, right? All right, so let's go over the homework for today. Um, you need to go through the launch checklist. You need to get your process selling VSL up. You need your landing page up. You need a growth specialist, and you need to track your systems, and you need to remove yourself from selling, and then you need to just sit back relax, spend some money on ads, and let your team make you wealthy. And you don't need to to wait 20 years to, to be wealthy, by the way. You just need like three years. Cool. Was today's helpful? Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, tomorrow we're going to talk about fulfillment because... Again, if you make a lot of money, you're going to need, you're going to owe a lot of people a lot of value, right? So how are we going to deliver on this value? Tomorrow, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about fulfillment and, um, and how you can fulfill. Now, tomorrow, what you guys can expect is, even though I've said, hey, deliver the most amount of value, tomorrow, you guys will notice that um, <clears throat> you need leverage to fulfill. You do not sell your time. You do not sell a bunch of done for you. It's really like implement and release. And then you sell management on the back end. Okay. So management and consulting. All right, cool. And um, yeah, if you're watching this on a recording and not you guys, just someone else, and um, you guys want to become partners, please come in. Let's join. Join GCP. I would love to get to work with you guys. <laughs> but uh, anyway, true. Uh, guys, take care. Thank you guys for joining today. And um, and then, uh, yeah, let's change the world. Okay, bye-bye. Later, guys.